Hello students. In today's lesson, we're going to go over some story problems related to yesterday's topic, which was acceleration. In order to get credit for today's assignment, you need to write down each of the processes on how we get the answers to the story problems. You can't simply write down the answer. You have to show the work. And we need to follow that guess method to organize yourselves in answering these story problems. So have the paper right here handy so that way you can refer to it. Uh, I'm going to move that aside so that way we have a little more workspace. If you feel comfortable enough that you can do this at a faster pace, you're more than welcome to do it on your own. But remember, you still have to have all of the material, all of the process written down. Remember, the process is every bit as much important, if not more important, than the product itself. So let's begin. We have problem set number two, uh, and it begins with question number seven. I'm going to write guess down for this first one, and then after this, I'm not going to. So you have to write out the givens. What numbers do I see? It says, what is the acceleration of a race car? If its speed is increased uniformly, uniformly just means that it's a constant acceleration. From 44, so I have a 44 meter per second, to a 66 meter per second speed uh, over a time of 11 seconds. All right, now the seconds, that's real easy, that's time. I know the meter per second, that's velocity, but I have two different velocities. This is where you're going to have to read and interpret this. It says it goes from 44, so that must be the original, and it goes to 66, that must be the final. The unknown, the thing that they're asking for, is the acceleration, and the unit will be meter per second squared, and then our equation for this, acceleration is final speed or final velocity minus our original, divided by the time. So we're going to substitute in our variables. We have final was 66 minus our original was 44 divided by our time of 11 seconds. All right, so our acceleration here, now I'm going to do this two different ways. We're going to do the numbers first. So you have 66 minus 44. You've got 22 divided by 11 gets you two for the quantity, the magnitude. Now the second part of this, if you look at the unit, meter per second minus meter per second, that doesn't change. We divide that by seconds, and what you end up with is meter per second per second. All right, that's a little awkward writing that. So what we do is we write down meter per second squared for the unit of measurement. Okay. Let's go to number eight. Number eight, it says, what is the acceleration of a race car if its speed is decreased? So we're slowing down. Now, if we are slowing down, that should tell you something right away. If it's slowing down, our answer should be negative based on the information from our notes. So we have a 66 meter per second, I see in here, uniformly, decreased uniformly from 66 to 44 meter per second. Notice I'm putting units in for everything. We have a time of 11 seconds. The meter per second tells me velocity, but I have to identify which one is which. It says that it was going from 66, so that must be the original. So the 44 must be the final. I need to figure out what they're asking me to solve for. That's acceleration. The formula for acceleration, final minus original, divided by time. All right, we substitute in our numbers. You have 44 minus 66, divided by that 11 second time frame. That means that you're going to end up with a negative two meter per second squared, all right? So you have 44 minus 66 is 22, divided by 11 is 2 meter per second squared. We go to number 9. 
Number nine here says a moving train, a train moving at a speed of 11. Oh, oh my gosh. A train moving at a speed of 15 meter per second. So I'm going to write that down. Is accelerated uniformly to 45 meter per second over a time frame of 12 seconds. All right. So I know that's time. I know this is a velocity and that's a velocity, but it says it goes moving at a speed of 15. So that must be the original and it speeds up to 45. And they're asking for the acceleration of this. So acceleration, final minus original divided by time. And now I just substitute my variables. I have 45 meter per second minus the 15 meter per second divided by your 12 seconds. So that means that we have, uh, we got 30 divided by 12. So it's going to be, what is that? 30 divided by 12, you got two and a half. So 2.5 meter per second squared is your, well, that's an ugly two meter per second squared. Okay, so that's number nine. Pretty easy so far, right? You go to number 10. Number 10 says a plane is starting from rest. Okay, so oftentimes they're just going to tell you that it starts from rest and you have to interpret that that is the original velocity of zero meter per second. It's accelerated uniformly to a takeoff speed of so that must be the final before it gets off the ground. You have 72 meter per second, and it does that in a time of five seconds. Acceleration, what is it? Well, you need to plug in your variables, final minus original divided by time. The acceleration, we know that it finished up at 72 meter per second. It was originally at rest. You divide it by the time that it took for it to accelerate. So you have 72 divided by 5 gets you 14.4 meter per second squared. All right, so we have number 10 done. We're going to go to number 11. Number 11 now says that you have a bullet leaves the muzzle of a rifle in a direction straight up with a speed of, all right, so we have a 700 meter per second speed. And it says 10 seconds later, so we have a time of 10 seconds. Its speed straight up is only, so we have another velocity of 602 meter per second. At what rate does the Earth's gravitational field decelerate the bullet? So if it's going to decelerate it, I know that this has to be a negative answer, right? So we need to determine which one is the VO and the VF. Well, it was shot from the rifle at 700, so that's their original. And then once it gets into the air, after that 10 seconds, it's only going 602. They're trying to find the acceleration of this. So our formula, VF minus VO divided by T, same old thing. We plug our variables in. I know that the final speed was 602. The original speed was 700. You divide it by your 10 seconds. And what do we have? It would be 90, 98. So our acceleration here would be a negative 9.8 meter per second squared, the acceleration due to gravity. We are at number 12 now. So we have number 12. Number 12 is that you have an arrow and it's shot straight up with an initial speed. So they tell you right away that the VO is 98 meter per second. We know that the time it says nine seconds. So we have nine seconds is the time. And it says that to do, 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 it speed straight up after that nine seconds is a final velocity of 9.8 meter per second.
and it wants to know what the acceleration due to gravity here is. Now, here's what you could do. If you had some understanding, you should know that gravity is not discriminatory. It doesn't matter what object is being thrown upwards into the air, whether it's a bullet that's being shot or an arrow that's uh, being uh, released. Gravity is going to be the same regardless for anything that's that's uh, being decelerated or pulled towards the surface of the Earth. So we know this answer has to be 9.8. Let's plug in the numbers to make sure that we're right. So we have a final velocity of 9.8 meter per second minus the 98 meter per second divided by 9 seconds. So what we end up here is we end up with... Uh, you subtract your 9.8 and your 98. Uh, that gets a negative 88.2. Divide that by 9, and sure enough, you get a negative 9.8 meter per second squared. The negative just tells you that you're slowing, oops, slowing down. All right, so it's a deceleration. Let's go to number 13, the last for problem set 2. Number 13 says that in a vacuum tube, an electron is accelerated uniformly from rest. Well, I said a moment ago that if it's from rest, you know that the velocity is zero here. To a speed of, well, that's our second velocity here, 2.6 times 10 to the fifth meter per second. During a time frame of, and I'm going to run out of space, so I'm going to put time down here, 6.5 times 10 to the negative second seconds. All right, they want to know what the acceleration of this is going to be. All right, so I'll put meter per second squared and doesn't ask for any specific units, so we're just going to leave it as that. So final minus original divided by time. So I will put in my variables. I have 2.6 times 10 to the fifth meter per second minus zero meter per second divided by our time of 6.5 times 10 to the negative second seconds. Now, since this is dealing with scientific notation, we're going to put this in so that we see how you do this. 2.6, press the EE button, 5, divided by... 6.5 EE negative 2 equals. So you should end up with 4 million. Do we have an acceleration of 4? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 2, 3 million meter per second squared. All right. Now, we are going to do one more problem set. We're going to look at problem set 3. So I would like you to put down here. So that way we know which one is which. Problem set three. And we'll start with question number 14. Question 14 says a car is uniformly accelerated. All right, so that means that you have an acceleration of two meter per second squared for a time of 12 seconds. Well, that's time. If the original speed is 36, so the original speed is 36, it says what is its final speed? So VF equals question mark. All right. So we know that the acceleration formula was final minus original divided by time. What you have to do is use a little bit of algebra to rearrange this now. We want to get the final velocity on a side by itself. What we'll do is we are going to multiply both sides by the time, so that way the time will cancel out on that right side. Okay, now whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other. So I'm going to put over here times t. All right, see, the time now cancels out. Now, how do we get the VO to the other side? Well, if it's being subtracted, we have to do the opposite. 
So if we add VO to this side, that means that we have to add VO to this side. This cancels over here, and you're left with a, it's not a new equation, it's just a rearranged equation. And I'm going to make it look a little bit cleaner. So we're going to say that the final velocity equals original plus, and then I always like to put mine alphabetically, plus uh, acceleration times time. If you struggle on rearranging equations, then you're going to need to write this thing down on your formula sheet so that way you know to use it. Okay, we're ready to plug in some numbers now. Plugging in the numbers, I have my original 36 meter per second times 2 meter per second squared times a time of 12 seconds. All right, oops, this should be a plus, not a times. Okay, so you have 2 times 12, you got 24. So you have 24 plus 36, you'd have 60. So your final velocity here would be 60. Now units of measurement, you should know that velocity is meters per second, but how would you cancel all this out? See this seconds here, is going to cancel out one of those seconds there. Okay, so that's gone, that's gone, and then when we add meter per second and meter per second together, what do we end up with? We end up with meter per second. Number 15. Number 15, we have an airplane at, is flying around at 90 meter per second is accelerated uniformly at a rate. All right, so that's gonna be a velocity. We have a rate of 0.5 meter per second squared. That's an acceleration. And then we have a time that it's accelerating for is 10 seconds. It says, what's the final velocity of this? So final velocity, meter per second. All right, so we need a formula. That's that VO plus A times T. So we're going to put that in parentheses. We go to substitution. We have 90 is our original velocity. Plus, you have 0.5 meter per second squared times 10 seconds. All right, so you have, and I want to make sure I have this good. It's accelerating, so it didn't say it was decelerating, it's accelerating, so it's speeding up. So if we multiply these two together, you've got 5 plus the 90. Our final velocity here is 90, let's do that 9 a little better, is 90, oop, 95, or 95 meter per second, okay? 16 says that a race car is traveling at 45 meter per second and it's going to be uniformly slowing down. So it's decelerating uniformly uh, at a rate of negative 1.5 meter per second squared for a time of 10 seconds. What is the final speed all right, so we want the final velocity, and it's asking for a two-part deal here. It wants to know, A, what is the velocity in meter per second? And then B, it wants to know what that velocity is in kilometers per hour. All right, so some factor labeling is going to be required here. We use the same formula we had before, which is our original plus acceleration times time. Right. And like I said, I'm just going to put that in parentheses so that way I know that I have to multiply those two variables together first. We'll plug in our numbers. You have the original speed is 45. So you have 45 meter per second plus the acceleration is negative 1.5 meter per second squared times our time of 10 seconds. All right, so we're going to have 15 
1.5 times 10 is negative 15 plus the 45. Our final velocity right here is going to be 30 meters per second. Now we have to factor label this. So to factor label it, we know that one kilometer equals a thousand meters, and we have one hour equals 3,600 seconds. Putting in our bookshelf method for these conversion factors, I know that meter is right here, meter is right here, so that means that that portion of the conversion is going to go in the denominator to cross cancel. It means the rest of it goes in the numerator. We take the second part, you have seconds. Right here is seconds. So I'll take that portion of my conversion factor and I'll put it in the numerator to cross cancel it. That means the rest of it goes down here. All right. So we'll have 30 times the 3,600. Oops. 30 times 3,600 divided by 1,000 equals 108 if I put the numbers correctly into my calculator. So you have 108 kilometers per hour. So your two answers here, you have part A is here and then part B is there. Okay. We are heading to number 17 now. Number 17. Number 17 starts out. It says a spacecraft is traveling at, well, we have 1,200 meter per second. So that's a velocity. And it's accelerating at 150 meter per second squared. And it says, if the rocket burns for a time of 18 seconds, what is its final, the final speed or the final velocity here? All right, VF equals our original plus acceleration times time. We'll put in our variables. The VO is 1,200 meter per second plus our acceleration, 150 meter per second squared, times 18 seconds. All right, calculator time, people. You have 150 times 18 gets you 2,700. You add that to your 1,200, and you're going to come up with a final velocity here of 3,900 meter per second. Now, what you need to do is you need to make sure that You've gone through and filled in all of the work that I have put onto the, the board here or onto the screen. You need to take snapshots of that work and submit that to Schoology. But you need to be certain your name is on your paper. If you don't have a name on the top of your paper, you're not going to get credit until I see it in person then. So... It has to be turned into Schoology with your name on it, with all of the information right here. 